Hello, 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 my friends, and welcome to Jesse James Beads. I hope you've had a beautiful day so far and that it continues to be absolutely fantastic for you. What have you been up to and how is the weather? These are my usual questions because obviously I'm quite jealous because the weather here is a bit rubbish at the moment. Not particularly summery and nobody seems to have notified the sun in the UK that it is August. Happy beginning of August, August the 3rd today I want to say. Give me a quick wave so that I know that you can see and hear me well enough. For our live class today, the remit was Raise the Bar, which is the Summer Bead Blast Challenge line of the week. So bar jewellery is the answer. Not going to the bar to have cocktails, which, you know, I did consider. It's been a bit of a week. <laughs> I hope that you've had a good one anyway, my darlings. Shall I just pop you down to the board so you can take a sneak peek at the sunshine-infused colours that I want to share with you today? Here you go. What do you think? Absolutely gorgeous, gloriously sunshiny beads to work with. And both of these are from the Beads by the Dozen collection. So sometimes you'll open a box... A beautiful bead box from Jesse James and you will think core cool, I absolutely adore that bead well this gives you an opportunity to get a dozen of them so do have a look at the entire range I have however linked both of these down in the video description so if you are inspired to make some sun and fun jewelry as I am today then you can have those delivered really very very quickly by just following those links Deborah is in hello my lovely how are you today so Deborah is in Sen is it Senseca or Senseca Pennsylvania just below Lake Erie hello lovely lady hello lovely you it's good to have your company thanks for hanging out with me today I always appreciate you hopping on the live it's always appreciated watching on the catch-up as well what do you think to these colors are they a you color I don't usually go for oranges but at the moment I'm really feeling the need for some sun and fun so i've got a sun and fun bar necklace for you today cynthia is here hello cynthia how are you today my darling i hope that all is well where you are in the world it's beautiful said cynthia thank you so much my darling how is the weather where you are today have you got sun have you had fun it's sun and fun bar necklace today it's still me gradually losing the plot as the day goes by <laughs> yeah so we had a little bit of sunshine this morning over here in blighty and um, and then it went away by the time i got out of work it was a little bit dingy again and then it's been raining so you know let me live vicariously through you with your local weather reports is it warm is it sunny is it gorgeous fabulous so today we're going to be using two bead types i've linked them both in the video description if you fancy senicha 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 I wouldn't have got that in a majillion years. I don't know what that is. It sounds like a big number. Sinicha. Mm, I'm not entirely sure I'm still doing that wrong. <laughs> Donna is in. Hello, my darling. Hello, Geminol, says Donna. Donna's here and saying hello to you all too. How absolutely fantastic. 100 degrees where Cynthia is. Oh, wowzers. That's quite toasty. I think as long as you've got somewhere shady that you can be safe in, that sounds delightful today, to be perfectly honest. So I have linked both of those beads by the dozen if you fancy those. If you want to recreate the designer but with different beads, that's also a winner. I'm using two primary wire gauges today. 18 gauge round wire to create the bar. And you can use either a craft wire or a medium tempered German style wire. Either will work. It'll be absolutely fine, whatever you have available. Just choose your colour that makes you happy. I've gone for a copper colour heavier wire, that 18 gauge. And then we're enhancing that bar design with some 20 gauge round wire. Now my 20 gauge is a little bit tense. It's a medium gauge. Softer craft wire would be better. But you can achieve both with that medium gauge. Either or, it really doesn't matter. 
it's American Indian. That's why I was struggling to pronounce it. Well, apologies if I did mess that up. Sinicha. I'll try to remember. My head doesn't hold information for long. Celia's in from a sunny Lancashire winner. I'm glad that you're having some sunshine, my darling. AC at 72 and you on my phone app. Absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy to be here with you today. So in addition to those two gauges of wire, that's 18 gauge and 20 gauge. And I'm going to be using around about 10 inches of the 18 gauge, but quite a lot more, 24 inches of the 20 gauge. But you know, if it doesn't go quite as long as that, it doesn't really matter. You can simply adapt the design as you go. That's the beauty of making your own jewelry, isn't it? I'm adding in a couple of clasps and a length of chain reaction. So one of the reasons that I love making bar jewellery is that you can change the necklace part, the chain part, for whatever colour, chain or design. I love the chain reaction because you get those glittering crystals as well. And you can mix and match them. What we're going to do is add a little clasp on either end and you can either pop it over the head and attach that at the front or I'll show you an alternative on the board in just a second. So I've got a length of chain reaction to hand, as well as two clasps. I've made a demonstration piece with lobster clasps, and then I have bolt ring clasps to work with today, and just a couple of jump rings as well. So let's head back down to the board. Anne has joined us from California. How are you today, my darling? Huggles to Gem and everyone. Sorry I am late. There is no bother at all. We're always here. It remains on Facey as a catch-up option forever. It also is going to be popped over onto the blog and onto YouTube, so you can watch whenever it suits you. You can pause me, you can mute me if I get on your nerves. Let's head down to the board and have another look at this project. Here we go. So this is the bar necklace we're going to make to together today. It's the Sun and Fun bar necklace. Two tones of orange. On the demonstration piece, I have added two halves of that beautiful, it's almost a smoky amethyst colour chain reaction and a huge, giant, oversized parrot clasp at the back. Because of the way this bar necklace works, you can simply keep your chain reaction all in one piece. And as I'm going to show you today, pop a clasp on either end and then you can attach one side, flip the chain around the back of the neck and attach the other side and you are good to go. And then you've got lots of different colour options. You can have some chains ready to go with clasps on the end and then you can mix and match them with whatever bead bar necklace you fancy. So let's just scooch this up to the top corner and add in, oh that went slightly too far, let's bring that back so you can actually see it. Let's bring in the first piece of wire that we're going to work with. Anne says she's doing good, that is good news, I'm very happy to hear it. Around about 10 inches, sometimes it pays to have a little more than you think you'll need, but this is about 10 inches off that 18 gauge round, and I'm going to give that a little warm through. Now it doesn't matter what order you want your beads, as long as they go on the bar wire, you can have them in whatever order you fancy. So I think I might mix this up a little bit and go for, these feel like wood. I'm not 100% sure what they are. The information is in the video description. And then you've got this opaque crystal with a most beautiful sparkling coating on it. So let's pick one just here, slide that on, and I'm just going to alternate them. So I've got five beads in total. Sometimes the wooden beads still have a little bit in the centre. You can just push that through, or you can pick another one. <laughs> Off it goes. Wee. So I've got my five beads, which I'm going to work with on the main part of the bar, and I'll just pop the rest of those out of the way for now. So in order to ensure that these beads don't go sliding off whilst I'm working, I'm just going to warm the end of the wire here for a second, and I'm going to turn the end over very, very softly with my round pliers, so that whilst I'm working, the beads can't escape. So let's do the same at the other end. A little bit of warmth into it, just to make sure that when I do this very, very soft and gentle curvature, I'm not damaging the wire so that it can't be reformed into another shape later. 
What we're looking to do is to centralise that section of beads in the middle of our heavier wire and we're just going to push away the two outside beads on either side. Now you can make this bar really as long and as elaborate as you fancy. If you want a bar that is much bigger, this measures probably about two and a half to three inches in total length from one loop to the other. If you want one that's a lot larger than that, consider cutting a larger section of wire, then you won't have any nasty surprises at the end. Let's now add in our second section of wire. This is a good two foot, 24 inches or 60 centimetres in funny money. Now this is a gold colour. This is a medium temper, 20 gauge round wire. Debbie has joined us from Northern Carolina. Welcome to you, sweet pea. I hope you've had a lovely day. So I'm just going to put a little bit of warmth in the very centre of that wire. And this again is 20 gauge round, can be any temper that you want that you have available. And I'm just heating through that central section of about 24 inches. I'm just going to allow that to cross over to create a circular form. I might just move my chain reaction out of the way as well, because otherwise it will go squee across the desk. So I'm going to loop that around the outside of my central bead and just allowing the heat of the wire to make that form for me. And this is one of the joys of using a nice round bead. You can't possibly go wrong. What I'm going to do at this stage is because my wire has crossed over in the centre, I'm just going to open that out on both sides so that I've got less opportunity of it crossing over. So it's just easier to see. So what we need to do now is to wrap around the core wire. So the core wire is our heavier wire. In this case, it's the copper colour in that 18 gauge round. And I'm just going to spin this all the way around, keeping my central bead central on that heavier gauge of core wire. And I'm going to try and form that smoothly around the core wire. Now I've wrapped that two and a half times. So I've got the pass of wire going over the top of that central bead. And then I've wrapped two and a half times and the tail of wire still on top of the core is coming away down underneath. So I'm going to do the exact same thing in the opposite direction. Now, if like me, you're heavily right dominant and you struggle to form that same level of precision on the other side, just flip the whole thing upside down. What we're looking to do at this stage is mirror image the first wrap that we've made. I'm going to support that bead in the centre of the heavier core wire and I'm just going to push my thumb gently over the surface of the enhancing wire. At this stage you can still move that core wire up and down. So if that has moved off of true then you have the opportunity to shift it around a little bit. I don't know what that word means but there we go, we've just made up a new one. Cindy says I'm from Texan, Houston, uh, from Texas, Houston, actually high to North Carolina. Haha, -ha, Cynthia is from Texas, Houston in Texas. There we go. So we're going to again wrap around that core wire with the lighter wire. And I'm going to go for two and a half rotations, basically making sure that the wire is going away from me in opposition to that little half crescent moon shape that goes around one side here. So we're going to move back and forth around the core wire now. So when I'm making a bar necklace, I'm looking to have it be symmetrical. If you don't want it to be symmetrical, you can go for a slightly more crazy approach. That's entirely up to you. I'm going to go for symmetry. So to do that today, we're going to scooch that next bead into position. And we're going to warm that section as we move along the design. Now my finer wire, that 20 gauge, is currently coming over the top of the core wire. Bring the next bead into position, support the bead, and I'm going to take the tail underneath that core. So it's going in a diagonal from the top to the bottom around the outside of the bead. So I'm going to again support that wire and wrap two and a half times. That's one and two. And because I'm using a wooden bead here, I can actually use that to just scooch that little coil that we've made really neatly and tidily. Whenever I'm making a bar necklace, I'm looking for symmetry. If you are looking to achieve symmetry too, 
we're going to do one step at a time in either direction so let's bring the matching bead on the other side and you'll be able to see what you've just done on the one side so flipping it round sounds like it might be confusing but don't fret you can simply copy and mirror what's happened already so that finer the gold color wire which is the 20 gauge sitting on top of the core at the moment we're going to bring that bead into position and take the wire now underneath pinch that over the outside again it's moving diagonally across that core and we're going to scooch that all the way around one time two and a half times like so so we have symmetry at this stage and that for me is kind of important you don't have to have it if you don't want to but I like how it looks so we're going to finish off the loop on this side first so I'm going to bring the bead flush up against the coil we've just made the finer the gold 20 gauge is currently underneath the core wire so I'm going to support the bead whilst I bring the tail around so that it crosses on top of the core and what we're going to do is bring that around just one time so it makes one complete circuit it goes over the top underneath and around and then continues along as if it never went anywhere at all so I'm going to pull that neatly into position and flip the whole design around you've still got quite a lot of this like alien hair coming out to one side ready to make more of the design so let's bring that last bead on the bar assembly into position again you'll note that the finer gold 20 gauge wire is currently underneath the bar you can use that wooden bead to just push it gently over to make sure that that's nice and tight support your bead and draw the wire over the top so again it's a diagonal pass of wire around the bead we're going to rotate it just one time all the way around so that we now have a little bit of a full stop on either end of that bar assembly what we're going to do now is draw these two great big elaborate long tail wires back towards the center so I'm going to just flip this over on to the vertical for just a moment what we're going to do is to bring the wire back around and continue to crisscross across the beads so you should be able to see that the finer the gold 20 gauge is sitting on top of the core so I'm going to go opposite the first diagonal pass let me just flip this back around slowly and I'm going to take that tail of wire now underneath so from on top to underneath the core wire and if I just pass that underneath first and then show you sideways it's another diagonal pass of wire bring that back upright and I'm going to take that wire all the way around that double coil that we created earlier and I'm going to do that twice the wire ends up underneath so we started over the top going to underneath and then the wire continues underneath we've got a naked section of bead here so we're going to go from underneath to over the top so let's take that gently around the outside just support that bead support the wire and draw that around one and a half times so that that tail of wire is coming away on the side where you don't already have that little pass of wire where we began the whole process uh, Debbie says beautiful thank you so very much Debbie also says hey Texas so we're going to repeat on the other side now if it's easier for you just do one step on either side at a time and then come back to the other side I've done two steps because what we're doing is kind of it's signposted for you the finer 20 gauge gold is on top of the core so we're going to take it to underneath so let's draw that around underneath just hold that in position whilst you get the wire to circle twice around that core that we've already wrapped that's once take the tail all the way around underneath and that's twice and the wire is now coming from underneath and we're going to take it to over the top if it gets tense at any time you can just give that a quick squish and a squeeze to make it tasty and toasty and warm not tasty please do not eat the wire wouldn't be good for you so from underneath the core around the outside of that bead to over the top and we're going to take that all the way around until the tails of wire match 
each other in that center point and says beautiful thank you my lovely that's very kind of you here we go so that's where we're at so far it's starting to take shape i hope that you like it as much as i do these are so much fun so what we're going to do now is to create a little bit of a wire twist now cynthia says just remember to warm the wire before you twist this is very good advice always warm your wire before you work it will work so much harder for you but when you're doing something like a twist you need to get both of these strands warmed through and the reason for this is you want them both to move with the same level of fluidity patty says gorgeous and sent me a heart with a bow on thank you darling so both of these are now warm what we're looking to do is just to start off very simply by crossing them over and we're trying to keep that as symmetrical as possible you can just push that down so that it sits a little bit further over the bead opposite to that first pass of wire that we made right at the very beginning of our enhancing section so we do want to grip quite firmly now as we just bring these two wires down so that they're sitting a little bit easier to handle very very gently stroking them so that they're just pushing away gently Leah says this is a great design I see so many combinations it's endlessly customizable I love these because every time you make it it looks different so when we're twisting wire by hand there are a couple of tools that you can use to twist wire if we're going for a little short amount like this I often find it works better to hand twist so what we're going to do is imagine sliding our hand between those two wires and imagine you're turning a key in a lock so I'm just going to put my thumbnail down here for a second to protect that bead and I'm going to make very small maneuvers at a time ensuring that that twist takes place in the very center it's going to go blurry because it's not in focus at this focal distance from the camera but you can see that it's central and those twists are even so if you make small movements like so you should get a reasonably even twist now if that comes out of shape slightly I'm going to show you a little cheat now this must be done with care caution and softness I'm just going to straighten that slightly and very gently twist it in the same direction and in that way we've just straightened it up the next thing we're going to do which you don't have to do if you don't want to is we're going to add another bead just to add a little bit more to the design now you can simply trim away and put a little coil on the bottom if you want to but I like more beads so I'm going to take one of those wires and push that away gently so that it sits as if it's kicking out to the three o'clock position there's your clock face one's kicking out to the three o'clock we need the other one down at the six o'clock and I'm doing that very very gently by hand pop that back in the correct orientation you can see you've got one at the three o'clock position on the clock face and one coming down at six o'clock now which bead do you want on the twisted drop do you want another feisty orange or do you want one of the beautiful kind of sunset wooden beads so you've got crystal rondelle or round I think it's wooden I could be wrong I'm not entirely sure so you tell me what you want on there next and I'm going to have a teeny tiny sip of water Anne's gone for orange one of these there we go she got in there quick that Anne <laughs> so the wire that comes straight down I'm just going to give that a quick straighten it should be fairly safe and easy to do we're going to add the faceted orange bead on both says Donna oh my goodness you don't want too much actually you know what we absolutely could we had more votes for the crystal but if you wanted to we could add a second bead onto the dropper what do you think what do you think both okay <laughs> so if you were going to stick with just one what I would do is trim the wire to around about an inch and three quarters create a coil and then bring the second wire all the way around the bead and just spin it around a couple of times so that it sits neatly and then take the wire back up over the top however I've had another request for both so let's just do both I'm going to take the wire around the outside of whatever bead I'm putting on the six o'clock bar hold that in position now my finer the gold wire is coming 
over the top of the core at the moment so I'm going to dr draw that down underneath rotate that around let's go for twice so once takes it to this direction and then a second time let's add in the wooden bead as well here we go let's pop one of those down at the base as I mentioned before sometimes there's a little bit of wood residue in the drill you can just poke that out with a bit of heavier wire if it doesn't work the first time let's just give that a squish a heavy wire is always more useful to just free that out or a bead reamer if you have one I'm just going to employ a little bit of wire from over here to just push that detritus out of the drill hole and that's natural materials it was very easy to do and it's now ready to use I love working with wood beads actually they're really good so we're adding a second bead in so I'm just going to smooth and warm this section of wire I've just pulled it all out of shape but you can soon whiz that back in look really easily warm that wire through and do the same thing but instead of going around one and a half times I'm just going to go all the way around once all the way around that core wire once now if you only wanted the one drop just ignore the crystal for now and imagine this is what you've done so we're going to trim away to as I said around about an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters and we're going to then create a coil down at the base of the drop so round nose pliers small movements will in will end up with a better coil basically so smaller movements and I'm opening and closing my pliers quite a lot as I take this round in just tiny quadrants of a circular form and every time I open and close my pliers I'm strengthening that coil the coil does need to have a little bit of residual strength because it's going to sit down there at the bottom of your design it might see a little bit of action so once you've finished we're going to noisily strengthen that coil so it's a bit more like a disc it's become much less floppy and ready to be worn now so we're going to take the tail of wire that went across the side and because it's starting underneath what is now the core wire we're going to draw that around the outside and over the top of the core wire and we're just going to circle that one time so that it comes up it's underneath again draw the tail around over the next crystal bead over the top and all I did on this design because I wanted it to be a little bit cleaner looking is I rotated twice around the twisted core and just cut it away at the back if you want you can add another coil let's just get that rotating around and make it look neat and tidy do you want another coil sitting over the surface of this section of the dropper or do you want a neat and tidy zero fuss finish what do you fancy my darlings interactivity on the live let's just give this a bit of a push down so that it sits neatly I love this and will now add this to my business thank you Gem I do love you I'd love you back Cynthia thank you so much for watching really appreciate it there we go neat and tidy says Anne so if you want a coil over the front you've got plenty here there's around about an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters so you can bring that over the front add a coil and then just press it down if you want it neat and tidy take that to the back of the design we're going to cut that away and then make sure that we squish that last little section down so that it sits flush very very gently when we're working with wire we've done funny things too there is a huge difference my friends between handling wire that is like this to wire that you've done something funny to when you twist wire you do something funny to it so we don't want to cause it too much stress and aggro so if you did want that coil you absolutely can just bring the coil to sit over the top of whichever bead you've decided to add and just squish it down against that twisted section and we're always going to be very respectful of our beads especially crystal beads as they are delicate little flowers that need to be treated with love and affection so there's your main central bar section you may need to just 
give that a bit of a push to make it sit exactly how you want it to sometimes it's actually kind of fun to put a little bit of curvature into the design but don't mess too much because we don't want it to be all cracking later so in order to make this into a design that you can hook into let's just pop this over to one side for a moment what I do with a lot of my jewellery is make it interchangeable so all I've done is I have this stunt piece just here so it's an oversized parrot clasp at the back two halves of a chain reaction and then I've got these very simple lobster clasps these are actually on split rings that I had knocking around from previous iterations of the chain reaction that I had but you can use jump rings and all we're going to do for this piece is I've got this lovely fresh almost like an antique rose colourway and all we would do is add a clasp to either end so once we've added those clasps on please open your jump ring with um, two sets of pliers rather than by hand it will end up a much neater finish so let me just get that second set of pliers so I can do a professional job and we'll just close that one up like so making sure it's neat and tidy and then we'll add one on the other side as well when opening jump rings one is supposed to use two sets of pliers and a little bit of a key twist again to make sure that that sits neatly and doesn't lose any of that beautiful round shape and then we're going to just close that up and I've now got another multi-purpose necklace back which I can interchange dependent on my outfit or my mood with this gorgeous smoky amethyst colour one or this really beautiful fresh almost antique rose colour and in order to give ourselves these loops you can add if you want more coils but I like the clean lines like I have made on the demonstration piece and I'll show you how to do that now so rather than creating a wrapped loop on either end which you put directly into wire we're going to make this an interchangeable bar necklace so let's grab some bent chain nose pliers you can use chain nose pliers and I'm using the width across the plier near to the end to leave a little gap just here and that's on purpose I want that gap because I'm going to fill it with coiled wire which adds strength and rigidity to your design so dependent on which clasp you're using that will define how large you need to make your wrapped loops on either side of the design so if you have access to these fantastic uh, memory wire pliers I use these all the time because you get the same round size whichever way you cut it when you're using round nose pliers you can accidentally move up the dimension and you end up with different sized loops on either end so if you can grab some of those not just for memory wire my loves uh, Margaret says sorry Jen we'll have to catch up with this later hey no worries I hope all things are well in Edinburgh my darling Leah says, wow, I never thought about adding lobster claws to the end of change so you can change pendants. Oh, yes, absolutely. I change my mind about my jewellery all the time. What colour do I want? I don't know. Maybe today it will be gold. Maybe tomorrow it will be bronze. So I'm going to rotate these beautiful little pliers around. And you'll see that that bar is still flexible at this stage. That's fine. We're going to rotate that wire around until we get a round form going to do the same thing now on the other side always remember if you're using stepped bail makers that you will want to have the same number on your stepped bail makers or you'll still end up with odd hole sizes or odd wrapped loop sizes on each end so I'll just pop those back in the tool tray so they're out of the way what we're going to do now is create a sealed wrapped loop if you don't think you want to change this at all and you simply want to add some chain in and always have the same chain now is the time you pop the end link of your chain into the loop before we wrap it but for me I love having these interchangeable so I'm going to hold that round form I'm not gripping where the wires cross over and I'm going to rotate the end of that wire around one time to begin with and the reason I do that is because it doesn't always go smoothly so I've just been able to tighten that up a little bit to make it neater and tidier what I'm going to do now is flip to the other end and do one loop on the other end and in this way I will never have too many wraps on one side 
So you can go from side to side and just add, let's go for another entire rotation around this wire first before we flip to the other side. Go for another entire rotation about this side and you can see how many wraps or rotations you want to have on either end. Now you will probably see that one face is prettier. I prefer this face because you've got more of the wire near to the surface. If I flip this one over, you'll see that it looks a little bit different. It still looks beautiful. There's nowhere that is not wanting to be shown. It is a dual face. I just happen to prefer this one because you halo that central bead. And you can use odd beads, of course, and have a really fancy central bead radiating out different sizes, different colours. There's a million ways that you can customise a piece like this and make it graduated however you see fit. I particularly love using rainbow coloured beads in jewellery like this. So you can start with a beautiful red in the middle and radiate out in both directions. So get your chakra beads, get your rainbow beads, beads, get your pride beads, whatever works for you, and make some colourful, beautiful jewellery. So I think I can get one half turn on either end of that section of wire that's hanging over. So let's draw that around on the one side, flip it over to the other side, draw that underneath. And what we've done is we've now filled the gap between our wrapped loops and the first enhanced bead that we've worked with. So if we flip over to the rear of the design, to keep this nice and simple, I'm just going to trim away. Always look twice and trim once. It can be very disheartening if you accidentally cut some of your enhancing wire. So do take your time, there's no need to rush. And then we're just going to squish that last little end bit down so that it sits flush and tidy. You can give that the scratch test. Does that scratch your thumb? Yes. Then you need to just get in there, give it a little bit more smoothening. Don't know if that's a word or not. And if you need to, you might need to just give that a rotation in the same direction that that wire travels. And then no more scratching. Do the same on the other end. Make sure that everything is super flush and neat. And then you have the option, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to, you can add a little bit of a twist to the design and in that way it will sit a little bit more differently at the neckline. You can also play around with it when you are wearing different uh, clothing. Sometimes you might want that to sit really low, sometimes you might want that to be a little bit higher up. Let's get that scrap out of the way shall we? Why don't I add in the other chain reaction and then I'll tell you about the two different ways that you can use the chain reaction before I love you and leave you for the day. So with the one I made before the show, you've got those two lengths of chain reaction with that smoky amethyst colour crystal. And I've added a huge oversized clasp at the back. I quite like a huge oversized clasp because it means that my clumsy fingers will help me put my own jewellery on. If you prefer cleaner lines at the rear of the design, you can use whichever chain you like. I just happen to love chain reaction. You can pop one link through your wrapped loop, throw the chain around the back of your neck, and then pop it in the other side. So it's much easier if you struggle. I've got one shoulder that simply does not work, and sometimes lifting my hands behind my neck to make the connection happen is a bit tricky so having jewellery that you can fasten at the front is really kind of handy. So hello I'm still here it's still me let's look at these comments. Leah says wow I never thought about adding lobster claws to the ends of chains so you can change pendants I did see that one earlier. Cynthia says that's cheating but I like easy cheats. Absolutely why would you want a difficult cheat? I mean, come on. I hope that you have enjoyed the sun and fun bar necklace for this week's JJB a bead blast, summer bead blast challenge, which was raise the bar. So I love bar jewellery anyway, but working with those gorgeous sunshine infused colourways has really given me a hope that the weather might change soon. I could do with some sunshine. Um, bye, says Anne. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you so much. You too, my love. Deborah says, this is absolutely beautiful and spiffy. Love it. Have a wonderful day, lovely lady. And you also. My love and hugs and gratitude to each and every one of you for joining me, either on the live, on the replay, on the blog, over on YouTube. Thank you so much for continuing to support us here at Jesse James Beads. It is my pleasure 
I am Jem, if we haven't met before. I'm from the United Kingdom. You can find me on Facey, Instagram, YouTube, other places, Twitter, all of those things that I don't really know how to work. You guys take care and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Lots of love. Bye for now.